The Shadow Crew Podcast. I could never tell what country he was from in that movie. Blood sport where he like looks at the camera. Little Irish dude walking around. Does it sound like that's gonna go too well? (laughs) Volume two, that's the best spaceships of all time. He man's power. It does come with its own castle, and and he dies in the first. Yeah. Oh no, sir. (laughs) He's in the entire film. Sit back, get your popcorn. And uh, enjoy your note taking on that epic film. <laughs> well, all right, I am hyped tonight, big time I, hyped. Hype, hype tonight, tonight. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. And you know what? Since it's the last Ooh. show with the Shadowproof Podcast. I guess I'm the guy that actually does the intro tonight and everything. The first time I'm allowed to do it is the last show. So <laughs> That's correct. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm actually sad. Yeah. yeah I'm sad. This is our yeah. uh, our final Shadow Crew podcast episode, but on to uh, just a, re- a rebrand. So I'm oh, actually yeah. not sad, but I'm kind of sad. Uh, but uh, I'm excited about next week as we uh, rebrand our podcast. Uh, so same time, same bat channel, but yeah. uh, uh, a new content, new stuff, new logos, new merchandise, new videos. I'm looking if, forward to the new. If everybody hangs out and everything before the end, how see how this episode goes. We may have a new cast member. Actually, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody might be vo- voted off of the Pixel Plastic Inc. Uh, island. Uh, we've got some good things rolling tonight. Of course, our main and uh major topics so we're going to run down some films we're going to run down uh bringing into the first quarter of what was the good from quarter number one of 2024 and what was bad from quarter one so now i I know myself i think i already have the winner of what was bad (laughs) so uh godzilla versus kong's dropping today uh so i know that's a big time thing will ghostbusters actually retain their box office dominant or will they go out the window with a Kong kind of strike? WonderCon is a manga in uh, Anaheim, California. If you're here, like uh, three of our cast members are, uh, then uh, we had a man in the actual convention floor and uh, he ran out of cell service. So we're not going to be able to do a live from the uh, show. So technical difficulties claim that one. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, panels that's going on, a lot of great toy panels. Uh, I believe there was a, the Jack Specific dropped some news today, so we'll get into that. Uh, and, you know, as usual, we're going to have to say goodbye to the name. So I know we've got a special video queued up for that. But uh, with all further ado, we'll jump into our main topic tonight. And again, what's the good and the bad from quarter number one, 2024? So, you know, all right. So let's let's start with films. Uh, Let's go for the good, because I think we all will be in agreement what was bad. So what was everybody's take on it? What was the the best film in the first quarter that you believe you've seen so far? Hmm. I think Madame Web. (laughs) That's that's, (laughs) (laughs) probably, probably, I don't know, that's rough. For me. Yeah, it, it, it is because I, I this is one of those few times where I don't think there was a, a lot of things to jump off from. I know they just dropped last week the um, Roadhouse that went direct to uh, Prime. Anybody watch that? No. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I felt it was kind of like tough because I am a Patrick Swayze fan and I just, it just didn't seem like it was a true kind of like rebranding kind of thing. Uh, all right. Well, like I said, I did see uh, the excerpts of Kong Godzilla today. It's um, I I saw on uh, uh Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, mm-hmm. Critics had an opinion, and the people that was walking out the audience had a completely different. So it's the same thing like with uh, Frozen Empire last week for Ghostbusters. The swing was completely different. There was 
the uh, critics didn't like it. The fans walked out and liked it. Well, the same thing for this. Critics absolutely destroyed Godzilla, but the fans gave it, if I'm mistaken, the 93 score. So, wow. Well, but that is the people that went to see it on the opening course right so they it's front loaded with people that want to like kong and godzilla they probably have the ringers that came through but you know (laughs) well i i read one of the uh critics reviews because Mm. it got destroyed uh and and i i figured it would but one of the one one of the things that critic had said was it was like uh drunk on cgi (laughs) and that is why the fans liked it because that's why you go Mm -hmm. is to see Two epic monsters, full of CGI, popcorn movie. So I don't doubt that the early people, to Dr. Brantley's point, who are mm-hmm. Godzilla, Kong fans that like just that style of movie were probably entertained. There's probably not a great story. I'm going to go see it, mm-hmm. but probably not a great story. It's definitely not uh, Godzilla minus one, but uh, I didn't expect the critics to be uh, all, all all fans of this no. film, mm. uh, but I'm sure uh, there's some probably cool fight sequences and things. But um, I, I was not surprised to see the early Rotten Tomato scores. Well, that's what makes a Godzilla film. To be honest with you, no one's going to. It's in the title alone. <laughs> it's Godzilla. No one cares about the humans. The only time I think I saw it done right was the the Apple series uh, Monarch. That actually was the best storyline, uh, other than I the first half of the original Godzilla movie with uh, Brian Cranston. Mm. But other than that, you know, it's the humans is actually they're the ones that boggle down the the story, and the whole melodrama between the characters never really has worked. So you know, and then I, they just keep bringing certain cast members over for a movie, and then they delete some cast members, and they bring in certain other ones. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just looking again. All I want to do is see Kong and Godzilla fist bump. They do that, I'm good, man. You know, you got my money. <laughs> and to be fair, in Hollywood, typically to be fair. the first quarter, they don't release a ton of great films. It's Oof. usually they get the garbage out in January and early February, and then some of the good films start to roll in early March. So I know Dune came out, there's Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. I think Q2, Q3 is you know, they're gonna pick up some steam. Uh, and then it tails off in late August, September with the garbage mm-hmm. comes out and then picks back up. So um, I'm not surprised there isn't a ton of great films that came out. Um, there was a ton of bad films, though. They, 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 they backed up the truck and let all the shit into the dumpster. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. they didn't do that with the actual budgets, thank God. But they mm-hmm. they did it with the advertising uh, budgets I, because they murdered themselves with some of these movies, man. I'll tell you my my favorite thing so far about uh, Kung Fu Panda has mm-hmm. been Jack Black singing that song with the music video all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> just it just it just reminded me how much I love Jack Black. Yeah, don't ruin him yeah. for me. Yeah, that's like you know it's kind of like same thing. Uh, Kung Fu Panda is kind of like Despicable Me. It's like no yeah. matter what the storyline is, the actors are really great, the characters are really great. That's almost money that they're printing for themselves. Uh, but yeah. at this point, we probably have to say Dune Two is probably the best film and mm-hmm. benefited from so much complete garbage being in the theaters. You know, you've got everything from Madam Web. We all know how bad that movie was. Like, wow, that was epically bad. Uh, you know, I actually watched it. I don't yeah. know if any of you. Guys I did too. Did. I did too. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> don't. I'm, uh, I have no plan. I, I know Mr. Is Maddox. it better than Robo Vampire? Is the question. <laughs> oh. Hey, that's what we got to bring back with you the know what? podcast. Is I ex- exactly? I loved Robo Vampire just because I was that's laughing right. through it because it was so mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. Madam Web is one of those where it's just bad and it's not over the edge of it's so bad it's actually entertaining mm. well yeah towards the end of the year you'll be able to see one more of the spider verse popping up and that's going to be craven so you know don't, <laughs> that that spider verse is still strong and kicking unfortunately uh i would say yeah. frozen empire i did get a chance i saw a mr maddox sitting in an extremely empty theater Oh and, man, uh, in Georgia. <laughs> that that was a uh, that was a that was a bummer. I I wanted to go. I wanted to go see it. I wanted to 
to to give it a chance and i don't know if i told everyone else here but i did call storm and i was like you you want to hear something crazy about this ghostbusters movie he's like what i said there was literally six people in the theater right and uh three of them walked out <laughs> <laughs> So that's how good that was. Wow. Just, uh, just, well, it, it had I, to be the worst. So I, I guess it was like a super high budget, right? Oh, well, it was but about it 100 had, million this summer. Okay. Well, I don't know where they used that money because mm-hmm. the CGI was bad and the big bad was like, I was telling, I was telling uh, Storm that Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man in the old one was better graphics <laughs> than what is in the new wow, one. Wow. And, and I'm not, and I'm not making that up. I'm not trying to be mean. I, I, I love Ghostbusters. I, mm-hmm. but I, but I just love the old ones. None of these new ones did better. And even Storm said that the all female Ghostbusters made more money. So, uh, mm, you know, it just, it just wasn't. I don't yeah, know. I, I saw this one as well, mm-hmm. uh, and I say I, I liked it better than Afterlife. Yes, um, slightly. Yes, yeah. because it was actually about ghost busting, Correct. and in New York, and they spent a lot of time in the firehouse, and so that was cool to see some of that stuff. But yeah, it's like the villain; nothing happens with it until oh, it's Act Three. I guess we better have a big finale. Well, yeah. So I don't know. Can we? Are we? We're gonna spoil it, right? Like we could talk about the spoilers, or if you have seen watch, the movie, do you want to watch it, Chris, or through. no? No, <laughs> you, don't, you, so you don't care. <laughs> yeah. so. No, because you all are uh, you. You are uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's probably that it, Colt. That's probably the best reference. Mm-hmm. I don't know what was done in the first Jurassic Park, but that is the best special effects of all time. Yeah. Hands down, it, it, still to this used, day, like it doesn't. You could it doesn't hold a candle to Avatar. Like it just. Well, like, they use they use practical, but that was like Jim Henson, and they use like practical effects. But there was still like CGI. Yeah, yeah, you no, know, I know, but the CGI was like enhancing mm-hmm. the practical effects exactly versus just like CGI only. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's here's my issue with <laughs> with. <laughs> Here's my issue with Ghostbusters and Mr. Brenly Doctor. Because you were you were one of four people, so that's the first I sat issue. through that mother I sat through that <laughs> piece of okay. Here's my issue with <laughs> with this Ghostbusters. You sit down and you're like, cool, this is gonna be a lot. I give it to you. There was definitely a lot more focus on the firehouse. It was great, mm-hmm. but the firehouse was bought by um uh what's his name? Winston, Winston. Yeah, went by Winston because it was a uh uh has like a portal somehow built into it uh but then you realize that the overarching story of this ghostbusters is peter vinkman's granddaughter or whatever she was mm-hmm. like her love interest with a ghost not just the patrick out. swayze kind just no nope, just just a, just as an <laughs> fyi she sits in a park to play chess because she gets told she can't be a ghostbuster because she's too young Sits in a park, a ghost starts playing chess with her, and then they have this like weird thing where the ghost has been 16 years old for like hundreds of years, and they you can tell they fall in love, and then that's ultimately like the downfall of towards the end of the movie where they realize, oh shit, act three, we gotta do something with the big bad. Uh so yeah, you know, uh I don't know why they didn't call him Slimer, they just call what did they call him in there? Like <laughs> It was a uh, chomps or something. I don't. I don't remember something name, stupid. But yeah. It was, yeah it was... Well, you know, again, they, 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 like, you know, this will be the last time we'll be able to use this red. But busting didn't make me feel good, man. The something about no. it just, it didn't work. And it was just like, you know, I, I really thought they had a, a, you know, getting the original cast, getting Bill Murray to come back, and getting some of the original cast members. I think you still just want to see a continuation, maybe like a, a fourth film or a well, third for them just of that crew because you're you're bottling down with adolescents and situations that just didn't seem to make sense and it the tone of the movies change it's not as like the first movie let's be honest it's extremely raunchy it's extremely you know a lot more adult and uh, you know it's because these jokes and everything work well with the cast members uh it just doesn't work when you have like you know a teenage audience involved into it so it's like they they kind of shifted the tone from 
the original and then they say well we've got to throw the original ghostbusters in because the last movie wasn't really perceived as well let's see if yeah. we can actually jump start that and it's just not we just knew they were going to play just to move a story along and it just didn't work itself out man well to be yeah. fair uh the 15 and the 16 year old uh, look like they're in their mid-20s that's true, that's uh, true. Yeah. so and they probably are Mm-hmm. It's like Beverly um, <laughs> Hills 90210. And, but... and there was a huge rehashing of the first movie. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of elements that were just dropped in. It was like, you know, this is what they call fan service. It was 100% fan service. And, you know, it's just, it was unnecessary. It's unfortunate. But I think Doom actually is probably, Doom 2 is probably the, the pinnacle of uh, film. And it, it basically benefited from no really contenders other than i think con godzilla is going to make a run for its money this week but yeah not a lot uh, i found gonna... a i found a story that they could have used for okay. ghostbusters <laughs> that would have been better than what you all said all right and it's here, right in the here pages go. here we of, go sl- of slimer number one <laughs> what? This is slimer number one 1988 <laughs> from the pages of now comics <laughs> That's they awesome. Pulled something more entertaining. Well, so, well, they, for those they, executives listening, it's not hard to come by. That's Very next, easily accessible. If you need me to send it your way, I shall. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> Ghostbusters all about the slime. That's the next movie. So, well, they'll just spotlight him with a proton for some, pack. For some reason, <laughs> Slimer is hanging out in the attic of the firehouse. Which you know he's got no connection, and those are the only people that can actually cause him harm. Mm. So I don't know what he's doing there, but for some reason he's hanging out there. Oh, hopefully. Well, maybe they. Them rent. Yeah. yeah, if he's in the attic, maybe they said uh, slimer juice, slimer juice, slimer juice, and he came <laughs> out from the. <laughs> all right, maybe there's some cross pollination of films. I don't know, but you all sound you all made it sound really great, and I, that I should definitely take time to watch it. So thanks for the review. Hey, I'll hey. make sure I I, uh, I watch it when I'm really really got really it. Bored. I you need to, you need, all need to understand this because that slimer number one book or whatever is no good because the Slimer in this film is called Muncher. Muncher, that's it. There mm-hmm. you go. Mm-hmm. Well, Muncher was the one that they had in the afterlife. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but the, the, the one, no, the one up that was up sitting up in the attic underneath all the food wrappers is Muncher. Yeah, instead of Slimer. So, yeah, because yeah, he was like, I'm going to call you Muncher. And that's where. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, probably didn't, you probably didn't recognize that because you were bored off your ass. It was. Uh, it was. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there was enough product placement because he's putting Cheetos down mm-hmm. so oh, he, was. Uh, so he can <laughs> and he was so drinking fall into high, the trap. Uh, he was drinking was high C and he's <laughs> eating out of AMC bucket. I, I got to appreciate the old school marketing tactics, though, for this. Yes, film. they went they yes. went above and beyond every damn thing. I went into the mm-hmm. store. There's Ghostbusters, you know, chips and soda and, you know, the fast food retailers. And so popcorn buckets. Good. Good on them. Like, uh, even if the movie was bad, like, I love that old school marketing approach. Yeah. Uh, and, and the stuff that I saw was kind of cool looking. Really too. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's going to be there all through the summer and probably into the fall. <laughs> and, and all we get all the toys at Ross and Ollie's. If you guys, if you, if you want any of the Ghostbusters food, it'll be a grocery outlet in about a week. So I uh, just to stop on by, you get it half off. It might be expired. I'm going to uh, tell you. I'll tell you right now, though. They missed a massive opportunity by yeah. not bringing out uh, Ecto Cooler. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't even know if you're allowed to even use high C anymore. <laughs> yeah, why? Because it's, a... it's paint remover. Who are you talking about? Like, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy a sealed box of Echo oh, God. on eBay, and I'm gonna drink it on the. On no, the gas. It's, no. It's just if you like learned that... anything from the gum, and I was about to say that about the gum. Wow. <laughs> All right, well, now let's uh, move and on. By the way, that, that will go viral. So, yeah. yes, do that because we will get a million views. Yeah. Man <laughs> drinks Ecto Cooler from 88. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm down. down. He comes a ghost himself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I got to play that while we're doing it in case something happens. So, uh, from TV, um, anybody, like, you know, from the first quarter, we've had a couple of things. One, uh, I have to say, Chris kind of, like really kind of reinforced it to me. And uh, cause I was not really thrilled with the first half of the season one. And I stopped watching. He was like, no man, 
you got to keep pushing through. Halo surprised mm -hmm. the crap out of me. Yep. The that once you get to like the last two episodes of season one, but all of season two was amazing. Halo blew me out of the way. I'm like expecting and praying that they do season three because it was just out the box good. Yeah, they should. I wish it started like that because I think they lost a lot of people's interest. Mm -hmm, but if it mm -hmm. kicked off season two was like season one, there'd yeah. be a lot more people talking about it. But yeah. I agree with you on that for sure. Um, on on good TV series, um, something else that came out. I know it's under the radar, but um, I, I it, they they just came out with season two on HBO. And I've said it before. No, it's uh, no. it's Tokyo Vice. Tokyo Vice, yes, uh, yes, is really really good. Yeah. Um, so it's Ken Watanabe and the kid that was in. Well, it wasn't Dry, but Baby Driver, the mm -hmm, kid. Mm -hmm. uh, really great shot in Tokyo in the mid '90s with the Yakuza. Um, really great drama, and it, the season two just started. I think uh, early February. Mm -hmm. So that was really great. For bad, I know you all had mixed feelings I, I could not get into echo mm, yeah. echo i could i didn't i, I, I couldn't, couldn't it was hard it was hard for me to get into it yeah. i didn't i didn't get did into you it. make yeah. it halfway through because like i think it was like the third episode was actually yeah. good where they're uh, locked mm -hmm. inside the warehouse nope. with the sister yes two no, two was I'm, enough I'm, for I'm, me i tapped that back too Here's my problem. I'm tired of having to watch shit when it's like, well, just get to episode five. Yeah. Like, how about yeah, how about cool. you make the shit good in episode one? So I want to sit through episode five. Like, nah. this isn't comics. Like, my my rule of thumb when I would buy comics is, I would always have my list and I would always go through three issues before I decided if I was going to continue to buy it or trade weight. And like for TV, I'll give it like you you could do like you could do like one. Right or or mm -hmm. two, but like when someone's like, okay, but like, trust me, like, episode twelve is fucking great. It's like, well, then mm -hmm. what? Can I just watch episode twelve? Mm -hmm. Well, no, you got you got to watch episode one through eleven because you'll miss out and you won't know what twelve is about. It's like, well, can I watch the, like three second recap? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no, I, I I the same thing. I think uh, Doctor Brentley talk about we talk about this all the time. It's a streaming model. It's not because back in the days, if you didn't have early numbers on like you know network television you were gone they yeah. were not wasting time but streaming has this incredibly lazy like you know ploy where the first half of these shows they're like hey you're paying for it you're gonna watch it anyways and then by the last maybe two or three episodes they wrap it all the way up and i i can't tell you how many times i've sat through a show and i'm like wow like you know and it's more and more that i'm hearing from everyone else i, I was just talking to shadow just uh this morning about a show and he was like yeah it's like man the first couple of episodes like that is everyone says you got to sit through this crap constantly and it's not moving and i just think that they bake that in because they've got you you're paying you're anywhere between 11 to 16 dollars a month if it's crap you're going to give it as much because you're probably only getting one serving on this thing because i know max and and disney plus have been terrible with their releases lately well and... part of the problem is the way they're doing streaming shows right is they mm -hmm. map it all out yep and so it's like a big movie so the first stuff is just setting everything up and so that can be a little boring and by the end that's the big climax when everything happens where uh, you know when we grew up episodic television mm -hmm. each episode had to have the beginning middle and an end and a big ending in mm -hmm. you know just the last 50 minutes or whatever and <clears throat> they just don't do that anymore yeah the, the setup it takes it takes too long and there's certain times that you're turned off in exactly the same way yeah. like as i was talking to chris about halo like the first three or four episodes like jesus this show's terrible and i like i stopped watching and then he was like, hey, I started watching season two. You've got to get through season one. And the last two episodes was like right on it. And you're like, wow. And then all of season two, the momentum was picked up. And I was like, obviously, there was a lesson learned because they spent a ton of money on that show. But in hindsight, you go Amazon and you have um, the um, Lord of the Rings show. Minute that starts to the minute it ends, it's fantastic. It's moving. It's going. 
Yeah, well, we we hope they don't do that either, Colt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping I'm hoping for sure that they don't ruin that reboot because mm-hmm. that's uh oof, that's a couple of key shows too. I would say uh, if you're not watching or haven't seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith, fantastic on Amazon. Is it Shocked good? me. I didn't expect it because I looked at the, the cast and I was like, something just it is a the sleeper. It is a, a very action, high octane kind of show. It's incredibly written well. I was really shocked by that. Uh, I was also into, I was surprised Quantum Leap season two was actually pretty good. This has been a paid promotion by Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, I, I checked out X Men 97. I don't like mm. the animation because I'm, I'm a, a purist and I thought they were going to do it like the original show, but the story's good. You know, it looked pretty good. Uh, you know, very similar. Like the character design and everything was. The oh same yeah, but it, it's it's not the same animation. It doesn't feel like it's like the two. It wasn't animation. choppy enough for you. Yes. <laughs> hey, I was saying there's something. Go back old school. <laughs> the the toys are flying off the shelves, man. Yes, they are. Jeez, great, great product. you can't. You can't. Right now, I know we're dipping into the world of toys, but to try to find an on-card Wolverine X-Men 97 from Hasbro, you're paying about 95 bucks on eBay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And those things retail for 25 That's how popular that show is right now. Like all the all the all the folks that used to watch it are watching it, and all the younger kids are re- you know, they're discovering the X-Men franchise, which is great, perfect in time for Deadpool Wolverine uh that's coming. So they couldn't mm-hmm. have timed it any better. Uh, than you know the X Men kind of reboot in a sense, but you think they'll? By the way, you think they'll ever do an X Force movie? Not if they have to pay Rob Liefeld. No. <laughs> no. I mean, no, even if he was like somehow involved but not really involved, would you want to see an X Force movie or TV series? Um, I I don't know if there's enough material there. It's it's it, for a comic books in the '90s. You know, it was like the substance was there, but I don't think as a whole. Uh, it's not enough for it. The X Men is actually, you know, Chris Claremont, all the other yeah, different writers, yeah, they, oh, John Burns. They yeah. gave it, but I don't think there's enough uh, material to get like the classic version that we saw with like Rob Liefeld's mm-hmm. characters because they kind of done it in a Deadpool and they're like secondary characters. Cable secondary, Domino secondary. You know, it's just you know, it, it was a glitz and glamour book of the '90s, but I don't think there's enough material there to get a strong series. Now, maybe a Cable series. I think you can probably mm. do like you know a show based off of him, but I don't think X Force. No, I think maybe maybe get away with like you know I know they popped them on the X Men show every now and then they were like in the cartoon. I think they're good for cameos, but I don't know about a full show, man. That'd be cool to do like a a cable series. Yeah, not 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 Brolin doing it, but like or you do some of these like side. Like I would love to see like a Bishop mm-hmm. series, mm-hmm. like these like kind of lesser known. Uh, character. I think Nightcrawler would be a cool oh, like, yeah, spinoff yeah, yeah. series, yeah. like interesting yeah. backstory. So yeah, we'll see. Long but, shot uh, in the Mojo. Universe oh yeah, things you know. There's yeah, you know, and at the same time, like I said again, they're, they're just pulling out of warehouse old toy based toys, slapping them on new packages, mm-hmm. putting them on the shelf. Yeah, and we want to do dinosaurs. We got the Savage Land <laughs> right there. <laughs> mm. right there. But there yeah, what uh, Dino Riders? I think they've talked about bringing those back to as toys, and with that. Could be a TV series. Uh, I heard the Land of the Lost. Remember, remember that. Uh, mm-hmm. the TV? I love Land of the Lost. I think they're uh, thinking about bringing that back too. So it's just like all these retro uh, TV and film. So hey, if, if they left it on the shelf, they're going to try to make money for it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dinosaur. <laughs> Everyone wants. Everybody likes dinosaurs, man. You Absolutely. Know? Except when we see it at Comic Con, when an exactly, artist comes man. and brings their dinosaurs, yeah. different story. But yeah, that would be a new that'll podcast. Start, that'll be a story later yeah. on about. Uh, we'll do we'll do a podcast of what he thinks that we can't unsee at Comic Con. <laughs> D- Dino Rider, like if you can get a hold of just Dino Rider accessories, you can make a yeah. lot of money right now. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, super well, popular. All that eighty stuff, man. We're seeing that on on whatnot, and you know, we're seeing it also <laughs> on eBay. Yeah, like anything that's old, that's like you know, that's like not taken advantage of. Again, I remember like I've got to get check credit before we even saw Mattel throw down street sharks. He had already had purchased some, and then like that, literally, we're doing the Toy Box Chronicles. The next week, they're like street sharks is being released. He was like, he saw it. 
It's almost like he was, uh, he's <laughs> yes, sir, cult. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I keep hearing that music and everything. I see the rapids going over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm lost. Uh, I'm lost. From the world of toys in the first quarter, this is where I think the first quarter excelled. Because while you know TV was good, there was like one, maybe two movies that were great. Like they have been dropping first quarter because I guess the the fourth quarter of 2023 was so terrible that they brought their A game first quarter, and uh, the one that were I guess uh, Mr. Maddox had. Hit us up in the middle of the day was this Transformers TMNT collaboration, and wow, was that a collaboration, brother? Like I said, Chad, did you did you buy that yet, man? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, well, I couldn't I couldn't find it. Um, uh, Chris, I think Chris sent me the link. Uh, so I don't, I don't remember how I, uh, how I figured it out. Uh, did you send me the link, Chris? You did, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then and then I was trying to find it. I couldn't find anything. Chris was like, I pre-ordered. It. I was like, Where the hell is this? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I went. I went and pre-ordered it. Okay, um, it, but I also but, yeah. Don't forget, what's the other one too? The other the oh the, yeah, the Ecto the Ecto one Transformer. One. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to get that one yeah. too. Transformer what? Ecto one. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, what? what? Yeah, Doctor Brintley's got you topped. He has got you topped. And when he showed me this, I was like, okay, he's breaking oh, it out. Boy. Go yeah. ahead, Dr. Brent. I don't have he's any always Transformers <laughs> except he's this always one. got the grills. Like, we got the toys in the back, but then he just randomly pops up some mint on card. This is Mace Windu Transformer. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> and his ship turns into a Transformer with two purple lightsabers. And did, there's did Star Wars do right Star did, Wars you know, they did and, Star, and Transformers did a run? I guess they did. What the hell? They have uh the Emperor in his <laughs> ship. Uh they have Darth Vader and uh what they have a clone trooper and uh what Stacey year was 10. that? I don't know what the hell that is. But yeah, what this year? is from uh like the uh, either the first or the second movie. Uh, wow. I think probably episode one. That's wow. so cool. I had no idea that they did a collaboration. I didn't but it's going up on the whatnot store. <laughs> there you go. And it can be yours hey, too for a price. To be honest with you, that, that's going to get some big bucks there. Because I haven't yeah. seen it. I have no. not seen a transform. I don't know about you, Chad. I've not seen a, 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 a sealed mint a Star Wars Transformer. And you talk about two crazy fan uh like collectors transformers collectors and star wars collectors <laughs> right, it yeah. may not get as crazy you got the t it's mm-hmm. it's four it comes down to five the marvel collectors mm-hmm. gi joe collectors absolutely TM, tmt star wars transformers those are the top five mm-hmm. those are the people that spend the most money so you got two of the five <laughs> i can't wait to see that <laughs> I, don't, I think chet might bid on it and like undercover too like honestly, it probably won't even go up on the store. He's like, underbid everyone. Like, what the hell? And it winds up in Chet's store. That's now, right. Now, also, again, as we're thinking about uh, the two TMNT fans and everything else of that, uh, I know because again, somebody hit me up as usual. Uh, the uh, Punk Turtles is hitting Walmart shelves, <laughs> and he was like, "Hey, man, can you can you make sure? Because I can't find them out here, so." My uh, Saturday is going to be devoted to driving around, seeing if I can find the punk turtles on the shelf. Because yeah. out here in the IE, you can actually use the. Is, stuff it, off is the it is it hitting Walmart shelves? Because I, 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 I thought it was on. I thought it was Target. Uh, tar- is it Target or Walmart? I think it was. I thought it was. Maybe it's Target. Maybe I'm wrong. When, when are they coming out? Is it already? It's it supposed to be dropping out? now. It's yeah, they dropped on. Now. They dropped. They dropped today. Mm-hmm. You can order. Can you order it online or no? No, I couldn't find them online. It, it, it has been when difficult you, when to you, find them online. When you go on there, it says check in store. Oh. It's like you mm. know what I don't understand. Um, like you, you can't find Wolverine um, on card, right? Mm. Um, but no one is buying these like five packs that have Wolverine in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can literally buy this like this like X Men ninety seven five pack. Mm. And you can sell it for two hundred dollars because a hundred dollars of that shit is Wolverine. Yeah, okay. well, 
the two the, the two most demand uh, demand figures is rogue and wolverine the mm. rest of them you could easily find yeah and i've been seeing a lot of them pop up at ross yeah. yeah a lot of them are, are card just even though they just came out a lot of stuff is filtering yeah. through ross at the moment yeah. so you know i gotta give love to uh to hasbro for the uh the retro card stuff that's been selling really well and it's really well packaged i know it's just they just basically brought back the old molds and stuff and mm. uh you know change a little bit of the articulation but the x-men 97 stuff the spider-man mm -hmm. retro cards some of the stuff that's it's been really cool so i think uh, you know kudos to hasbro yeah. for releasing some of those toys on the bad note mm. the godzilla is is. the godzilla wow. comic toys and the the new tmnt stuff mm. from the movie were two really bad attempts at and if i'm not mistaken and i could be but i believe playmates did both of those uh godzilla versus Kong. i don't i think it might be playmates <laughs> let's let's do the let's do the search i don't know quicker. that but that that was really bad. I can't. I, yeah, those are the worst. When you go to Walmart, those are the only figures on the peg hooks, because nobody. Oh yeah. Buying. Wow. Yeah, nobody's buying them. Uh, Kong X Godzilla. Let's see. I think it's. I think it's Playmate. <sighs> Let's see. Because nobody, like you could go to your local Target or Walmart. I promise you. You will find anything you need. So yeah, no, it's it's playmates. Uh, it's oof. playmates. Yeah. yeah, and actually, you know, like I said, if uh, Chet, let me know. I can put some in my cart right now. They say it can, it'll be ready in thirty minutes. <laughs> if you all want the uh, Godzilla versus Kong stuff, just give it a month. It'll be oh, it'll, it'll, it'll be at Ross. You'll be able to get it half off. TJ Maxx, uh, the dollar mm -hmm. store. Give it a little bit of time. It's gonna hit a bit because those yep. were. The molds and everything else, it reminds me of like when Jack Specific did the um, uh, the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's just like they just got a license and they just did not take care of that. Yeah, that's just crap. Mm -hmm. Uh, we saw the um, uh, Street Sharks pop back up, uh, through Mattel, so they kind of did a pretty good job. Uh, we also have a Flip Or by the Mad Hatter that is gonna get funded, and actually, that money's coming out of myself and mr maddox's pocket next week <laughs> so report can be yours you no, 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 it'll, it'll come out uh on april 1st it comes out of your pocket the first or the second okay all right yeah so you yeah. got you got the weekend to you want to flip to make sure you get to make sure you get that money in your account yeah yeah uh and then also uh one we talked about in the toy box chronicles the um uh transformer legacy transformers and tmnt are kind of killing it this year because the um, Transformer Legacy pack with the five characters was fantastic too. So yeah, Hasbro is just again they had a terrible fourth quarter, but they have pivoted and first quarter is looking really good for a lot of toy companies. Yeah, even Mattel with the Motu line. Obviously they got Barbie, but Motu they got all those like collabs coming out. Mm -hmm. So they got some premium uh, format figures too. So. Mm -hmm. Motu collectors, you know, yeah. not it, not as crazy as the others that I mentioned, but because uh, I think a lot of them are like super old school collectors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, the young kids are starting to watch it, you know, with mm -hmm. the, some of the series on there, although Revelation wasn't that great. But uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool to see that TMT, TMT Motu mashup. That was and, Turtles of Gray School, right? Uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of weird. And also, like I said, you, you're starting to see some of the actual um uh, the TMNT characters hit the Rosses, but not like, in the same way that, you know, a lot of Marvel Legends and a lot of some of the classified characters did. You mm -hmm. know, it's like it's one or two. I think it's Beast Man and Moss Man, a couple other characters, but not a lot. But that's going to show you that because every time I'm in a, like a Walmart or a Target or someplace, the TMNT area is really kind of overtaken and the Motu section has been really kind of doing well. So. Yeah, you know, toy companies are having some record numbers in this first quarter, man. I went into Ross and I bought a sweater, and uh, at checkout they gave me three uh, Tomax <laughs> and three <laughs> Zomat figures for free, and I said no, thank you. So uh, just so you know, with every purchase, you get a GI Joe classified figure. You were um, like, how how, how dare you give yeah. me this? <laughs> yeah, just want to let everyone know this creates trash in my house. Exactly. So again, you know, a lot of great things that are popping up. 
<laughs> a lot of great things that are popping up from uh quarter one and uh, you know look i'm looking forward to like you know quarter two and especially quarter three because i think uh, we all know quarter four they're going to slack off on <laughs> but uh we've got some great things coming this summer we talked about that last week they dropped so many trailers to pump up everything that was coming out for the summer where well, we're going to be inundated with, with like a bunch of stuff so there's a lot to look forward to. And, um, you know, as we look forward to that, we move from one era to the next. So, again, you know, if you haven't if you just tune in, please like, subscribe, comment, uh, like some of our great guys have been popping up tonight. Uh, while, you know, this is called the Shadow Crew Podcast tonight, next week, April 5th, the show will be Pixel Plastic and in Ink. So if you're looking around and you're like wow what happened to the shadow crew podcast and everything we're still here same crew same time it's just a new name so you know if you see that pop up you know it's just it's us you know come and join us for that uh we got some toy news of the week that's kind of been popping up and also some uh some WonderCon news uh thursday they had the hasbro again uh, you know, uh, Mr. Maddox called me up first thing in the morning, like, you watching the fan stream? And I think I think Chris called me up too, or, or Texas was like, you guys watching the fan stream? Like, this was one of the best fan streams. And I'm not just saying because they did the uh, TMNT Transformers kind of list, but a lot of the stuff that they were dropping, uh, the, that cast was one of the better ones that I've seen from that crew. And it's like, the Hasbro just has been just killing it. And I, 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 I think the 40th anniversary. There's more to come because I know it's just February. They're gonna, they're gonna take this throughout the entire year. But wow, man, it's like they're just they're consistently pumping that stuff out, man. It's like I don't know if we're gonna, if it's gonna be a drop off or we got the whole year because they they dropped the ball last year for the 40th anniversary of GI Joe. They didn't put this yeah. much effort and time in, but this year they are really killing it with like you know all the promotions, all the collabs. Like everywhere I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I didn't even know uh, about some of these products, and they've been doing a good job on the social media, on the fan streams, on other people's sites, just getting this stuff out. So this was one of the better casts that that the they didn't have professional hosts, but it moved a lot quicker than what's up, Meeks. It moved a lot quicker than most of them, so that was pretty good. Um, and again, if you're looking for the uh, TMNT Transformers collab, it is. For pre-order, just hitting stores and situations, you might want to actually start tracking that down. Because you could buy four of them and have each turtle as a van, but it also you, you could also switch the heads. That's the, that's the smart thing about it is it comes with four additional <laughs> head. Uh, you know, sometimes you think, well, they're just going to take one character, but they actually kind of the accessories on it. If you're a Donatello fan, you, you can Donatello your your Transforming Turtle van. <laughs> if you're you know Mick, uh, Michelangelo or anything else, I think that's extremely smart. You know, because there are some people that are just dedicated to Donatello or you don't have to pick and choose. You can actually just swap the heads if you want to. Or like their hope is you'll buy three more <laughs> and just have the entire set. So that's that works out for them. Uh, yeah. WonderCon. We, WonderCon's popping up. It's actually this weekend. It's currently going on right now. We have a little bit of a news. Jack Pacific dropped uh, at a panel today. Uh, it was at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time out here that they are doing the Simpsons. Now, we've been seeing the uh, Super 7 have the Simpsons, and they've done licensing, but that's not really kind of affordable. I didn't hear anything about any prices that Jax was coming out with. Oh, no, it's great. They just released it. You could you get Amazon. On, you could pre-order Amazon. You okay. get the entire family with the dog and the cat for 25 bucks. Oh, that's yeah. Well, the, so you can't even get one Super Seven no nope. uh, yep. figure for that. That's like half of a Super Seven. Yeah, and I wow. read that, that. I read so there's not a lot of articulation. They're actually a bit smaller than the original Simpsons yeah. figures, but their focus is on play play sets, and that you know you get the figures. They'll re-release in waves, but mm -hmm. they want you to buy the house. They want Moe's bar. They want you to buy mm -hmm. the school, and I think that's kind of cool. Because we've always talked about what happened to the play sets. So they're mm -hmm. trying a different strategy was make the figures affordable and maybe the play sets you make a little bit more margin on. I think it's a good strategy. I like the Simpsons. 
I don't know about how small they are, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna pre-order. I mean, I'll, I'll support. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna focus on playsets, I'm all about like that new evolution of toys because we have been talking about that forever. So mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's available on Amazon. And okay. guess what? Uh, with pixels, plastic, and ink <laughs> next week, uh, not we're not gonna be an ongoing one hour ninety minute commercial, but uh, for stuff that we talk about, you will be able to pre-order through a link. And it'll help the show grow. So more to come on that. But uh, for now, go on Amazon if you want the Simpsons stuff. Yeah, I, I think I might have to get the uh, uh, the the comic book store. What's it called? The uh, Android Dungeon or something. I can't remember what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> that might have that's to it. that might have to be yeah. on the shelf behind me because if there's something that's appropriate for our show, mm -hmm. it's that. And if they and if they crowdfund the nuclear plant, well, I might have to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. But also dropping too, and it's nice to see Jack Specific come back because I know that's yeah. Shadow's favorite company. We had a chance to uh, tour Jack Specific in the payday when they were in Malibu. They were all very kind people. It was a very friendly environment. So I'm kind of glad to see them actually coming back from you know a fall that they had. So that's really kind of cool. So, um, so that's that's on Friday. Uh, one thing that WonderCon needs to do better is their whole itinerary was so absolutely jumbled that it was hard to pick out stuff. So I was glad that individual companies were putting on their social media feed what's going on because, man, they just had a list after list after list. And it's just overwhelming with all the amount of information they put it on and no way to distinguish whether this was a professional company or a couple of fanboys in, like, you know, room 319 talking about x-files it's like they they've got to do better with that and that's the same people that's doing san diego so but uh mcfarland put up on his instagram uh saturday at uh 12 p.m pacific time uh he's going to be doing a, his mcfarland toys panel but he's going to be streaming that live from his instagram page and his facebook page so you know a lot of these uh panels unless you're there they're not showcasing it but McFarland's going to let you in, and so you'll be able to run that. I don't know if we will jump on and do like a quick live stream with some of that stuff. We might end up doing that, but we're going to see some of his new materials that's popping up, and that's really kind of cool. And then I noticed, um, let me get through my notes and everything because everything's kind of going through. Uh, we've got Sunday, well, not, I'm sorry, still Saturday, Hasbro's panel. And Hasbro is saying that they're going to drop some exclusive news there may be something up possibly Drop some for knowledge on us yeah it's going to be 3 p.m pacific time uh there will, there's not going to be live streams or anything from them but they are saying they're going to put it up on their social media platform so that's how i think there's a pre-order coming because they're probably going to say this was revealed at the panel now you can rush over to mm -hmm. your online toy companies or the big box stores and purchase it so that's 3 p.m uh, the other note was Nacelle Toys, they're doing a panel on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Also not streamed. If you're there, it's room 300C. And I know they've been introducing, uh, that's from Nacelle List, the company that does the, the toys that made us on Netflix. Great bunch of, great television show. Um, they, they've moved into now doing action figures. And they're going to probably end up, we'll see live for the first time, the Biker Men from Mars. So, and that's an 80s property that uh, they're trying to bring. Everybody says it's like a ripoff of the, the Turtles, but, you know, it is what I it put is. The, I, put the, I put the link to Nacelle Toys uh, to their store in our in the YouTube chat. So people okay. can do that. That's great. Because that's important. It is. It is. And like I said, you know, the thing about it too, look, they, they do great material. I think if it's, you know, I don't know about I was never a fan of the, the original Biker Men from Mars, but I, I know that anybody that's collected those figures are probably absolutely jumping up and down because every drop that they've done has been able to, like, make the old toys even more valuable. So It's yeah. Biker Mice from Mars, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Biker Mice from Mars. Because, yeah. uh, you know, what better day to resurrect it than Easter Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, no lightning bolt has hit us yet for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least you're not, hey, at least you're not re-releasing Hellboy figures on Easter. That would be a whole different. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Although, <laughs> although Neca, are you listening? Because that would make an impact. <laughs> you, you, to, you totally dropped the ball on that one. Could <laughs> you totally imagine Neca it. on Easter, oh, Hellboy, wow. and Constantine uh, re-release? <laughs> <laughs> Hellblazer. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the board members was like, "This is a road too far. We can't." <laughs> yeah. <go." laughs> it's, it, yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, you know, again, uh, we've got uh, our our correspondent, uh, Mr. Mike Button, comic book artist, living a comic book life. He's uh, walking around the convention. You'll see him. He has all of his gear on, so you'll see him from a hundred feet away. <laughs> but uh, he's been uh, doing all the videos and everything. We're going to be posting some shorts and some videos over the week. Again, I don't know if we're going to jump on for the live stream, guys. But you know, I mean, maybe we might do something tomorrow or something just to see what's going on with McFarlane's panel. Uh, other than that, anybody else uh, did uh, like uh, well for our two resident other individuals in California, Doctor Brentley. Anybody going to WonderCon for the day? No. Yeah. Chris, like no. <laughs> no, I, I was I was actually considering going down, but uh, there's gonna ha- we're gonna have some rain over the next two yeah. days, and so mm-hmm. to, to get down to Anaheim, no, thank you. I did but, notice that WonderCon sent the information said rain or shine, we're still doing the show. Yeah, we have to prompt uh, people to do that. No, That's not good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be honest with you again. This is not a promotion for whatnot, but uh, you know when you needed to get toys, rare toys. Outside of eBay, that was the place to go. You'd have to pay exactly. up a bit, but you'd have a lot of you know mm-hmm. traveling toy uh, vendors. Mm-hmm. That has been limited, and uh, you see, as <laughs> Dr. Not. Brantley has shown, it's coming, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but now you can go on there and buy stuff, and so I don't mm-hmm. feel as oh damn, I can't get out there and you know go to the shows. Plus, I a lot like these major coll- like collectors and sellers mm-hmm. on whatnot. You know, they share that they've stopped going to shows. Yes, uh, because you know, hotel, room and board, food, Mm -hmm. travel expenses, not worth it. And if they're going to, maybe they go to one show a year. You know, the Mm -hmm. Atlanta Toy Show. Yeah, they go. They do like you know, like specific shows like for them. Yeah, you know, like you don't need to do it anymore. Like you can, all this stuff is super accessible now. Hey, we'll make we'll make PixelCon cheap, man. When it launches, exactly. PixelCon, PixelCon will be cheap. We just want people to show up. One (laughs) hundred percent. But uh, I, I have noticed that too. I've heard a lot of people saying that they're kind of skipping the show, and you know, I I, I don't know what's going on with uh, yeah, when was the last one to come? Years uh, ago, mine uh, would have been mine would have been two thousand um, two thousand eighteen. Uh, mine ours is probably like ten years ago, maybe so ten years. Was it WonderCon? Yeah. We did uh, the thing. No, yeah. no. We, uh, you talking about you talking about this? Yeah, what was it? What con was that? No, that that's uh, L.A. Comic Con. L.A. Comic Con, yeah, yeah the Wonder best Comic Con. Is... L.A. Comic Con was the best Comic Con ever in 2019 when we were there, and then uh, you know, the world yeah. shut down. The yeah. world shut down. Uh, yeah, Wonder Con. It's been it's been a long. It's been time. A, yeah, it's been a long time. I... Wonder Con. Same thing like San Diego, where we've actually been exhibitors. You know, every now and then Years. I think. Um, before the pandemic, I think in 2019, I went down and I literally stayed at like Comic Con for like a half an hour and walked around. I was like, I'm done. Got in the car. <laughs> you know what's crazy is uh, I'll tell you a little story. A friend of mine, uh, Chuck, uh, Chuck and I, uh, he got he got uh, tickets to to Comic Con, and he's like, Hey, let's go. And I, so I went with him, and we were driving. And uh, at Comic Con, the hotels are always sold out. You can't you can't get anything within like a short amount of distance. Uh, but I used an app and got us a hotel that was like a five minute walk to the convention center, and it was a hundred dollars a night. Mm. That's actually what, kind of reasonable because yeah, I know Dr. What and I because, spent some money. <laughs> oh, we stayed one year. One year, uh, Chuck and I stayed. Uh, we stayed in um, the Hilton that's right there, like in the gas mm-hmm. light. The gas, and we we paid four hundred dollars a night. It was like, but this hotel was literally a block away from that hotel, mm-hmm. and it was a hundred dollars a night. That's and good. you could have your dog with you. I had yeah. my dog with me. It's a bulldog. Yeah, I know. Well, we knew so we knew somebody that stayed in a bush. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Slept in a bush for three they, nights. <laughs> they had the water come on and hit him. You know. Yeah, and yeah, he didn't have to reserve yeah, uh, anything. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if you're did. listening, hey man, 
more more power to you. But uh, must have been uncomfortable as hell. Was, hey, wow. but he had his own wake up call. He you did, know, the sprinklers come on. Uh, yeah, really waking sure. up next to a drunk stu- stormtrooper with the rain. <laughs> that, in you. you know no. what? Though? You know what? Though, to be completely honest, though, I I've known people that have gone down to Comic Con mm. and didn't get a hotel because their whole goal was to wait in line for Hall H. Yeah, yeah. Like, there are some people and, that are diehard, and that just mm-hmm. that just doesn't happen anymore because no one cares about Hall H because it's not a thing. No. No. Well, after you slipped on that hard ass convention floor, you, you do it one time <laughs> and you'll never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, I have to say that uh, my company was a little bit responsible for some of that stuff because uh, when Twilight came out, Ooh. we did the presentation for Twilight, and mm. those people uh, are crazy. Oh, and yeah. All those oh, fans, yeah. yeah, they were staying yeah. overnight. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Damn so, like Ed- I said, damn team Edwards. Yeah, <laughs> was it Edward? I forgot. Was it Edward and Jacob? Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, you pick. everything you want to know about Twilight, <laughs> <laughs> which is nothing. <laughs> Literally, is nothing. <laughs> yeah. If you break out a, a, a Twilight toy right now, Doctor Brett, <laughs> 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 the show needs to shut at down. That, at that moment, that 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 moment that John he shuts Card. off, he's he's kicked off the show. It's like I told you, not every member was making it till next week. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it'll be like pixels, TV, plastic, man. ink, and not Doctor Brantley <laughs> is the new name of the show. <laughs> Team Edward, mint on card. <laughs> Well, like I said, again, hopefully uh, you'll, we'll be able to have some shorts and some videos up at WonderCon. Uh, I don't even know. And I'll be honest with you. I think the only show that I'm um, probably going to go to this year is uh, Joe Fest. And that's only because I got to fly out to Mr. Uh, Maddox part of the woods to go to the biggest G.I. Joe convention of the year. So that's about yes, the I don't know if I'm doing San Diego. I you know, I, it's it's one of those things. Unless, if we're not exhibitors or something, there's just no damn need for us. No, to no. make those sets. Yeah. So, I mean, Chris, Chris and I can pack up our whatnot stores and go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know because last year I've heard, like, you know, I even though they didn't have a lot of the Hall H and all the other things, you know, uh, some of the comic retailers did pretty good. Some of the toy people are doing good, but they're just charging way too much money physically for you to be like an owner and go there and recoup your costs and fly across country. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're locally in California, makes sense, or even Arizona, drive down, it makes sense. But if you're coming from the East Coast over here, it's, it's you're spending way too much money and you, you're not guaranteed sales like a certain time where we were coming up. You used to go there. Those guys were printing money at the convention there. Yep. So you know, yep. it's, it's best to save your money. All right. Well, we're getting to the point of the night and everything. And, you know, again, you know, we're having the countdown of tonight. Uh, last uh, Shadow Crew podcast under this name. We're going to be rebranding it to Pixel Plastic Inc. Put that down next week, April 5th. You're going to see a brand new rollout of some thumbnails and everything. It's going to look different. It's going to be branding eccentric. Uh, there there may be merchandise that some of us are wearing next week. We're, we're hoping. <laughs> so there's going to be some key things put in, but... This is the part of the night where we normally hit our sponsors. Now, normally, I would do the sponsorship, but I'm going to put that in the hands of someone else since I'm actually hosting the show tonight. So who wants to run down our sponsor tonight? I'll jump in, man, because I know you do it all the time. But uh, we love supporting the mom and pops and the small businesses of the world. Yes, we do pre-order from the the Amazons and the other big stores, and that's okay because uh, very soon, Pixels Plastic and Ink will also be working uh, with uh, one of the big, big players, but we want to support the smaller stores and what better one than toys versus games in Wilmington, California. If you haven't seen the shadow knows network channel, YouTube, uh, you could see shadow himself talking uh, uh, in the store and kind of seeing all the cool stuff, all the merchandise, um, all the retro things and stuff. So if you're in the area, if you're near Wilmington, California, it's toys versus games. They've been, uh, one of our uh, nice sponsors since day one, and we'll continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Uh, and I'm sure all of you who are listening have the the mom and pops local comic book stores, and uh, they are so important to the community and to this industry. So, um, you know, you, you can still shop from the big box. You kind of have to at times to pre-order things, but drop on by. Uh, your your hard-earned dollars sometimes are best spent uh, with folks that are just trying to make it and uh, we appreciate their support. 
And uh, as, as Mr. Storm said, I think uh, next week we have some exciting stuff planned for our first episode of Pixels, Plastic, and Ink. And we will be doing a giveaway. Uh, more details to come. But uh, if you are going to tune in, next week would be the time that you do it. So more details to come. We will be doing a giveaway. What is the giveaway? Uh, well, I mean, you take a look at uh, Mr. Chet and uh, my background. It could be a toy. Uh, it could be something rare. It could be a piece of merchandise, pixel plastic and ink shirts, hoodies, etc. More to come on that, but exciting time. Make sure you tune in same time, same bat channel. That's actually done perfectly, man. I couldn't have done it better myself. <laughs> yeah, and you can't get the older stuff at yeah. any of these big stores. No, nope, you know, no, if, nope. if there's actually something you're looking for, I, I, I you bet you if I went to uh, Toys versus Games, they might have that Wolverine there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, they might. Or and, and it'll you, probably be the original Toy Biz version. Yeah. Actually, or you know? if you go to that uh, the whatnot Pixel Plastic Ink, mm -hmm. they might have it there too. Who knows? No one, no one, no one talks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, you know, we were we've been going for like the last uh, three weeks now. This is week number four. We kind of built up the whole thing about the Shadow Crew podcast. You know, when we first started the uh, show, it was kind of like a joke because back in the days uh, when we used to attend conventions and, you know, Shadow was the elder dude, somebody would always tell us like, yeah, hey, Shadow and the crew. And at one point, we absolutely could not stand that name. But we thought when we were going to do the podcast, it's just a joke to throw back. And, you know, again, as we started going more and more weeks, it's like, well, this is actually getting a little bit more serious, actually. So yeah. we need to come with a new name. But uh, I, I got to tell you, man, I'm getting a little misty eye thinking about retiring the name and everything. It's been good for us for like, you know, 33 weeks. It's done the job. And, you know, um, I know that uh, Dr. Brentley uh, plant something special to say goodbye to the Shadow Crew podcast name. If so Morgan sad. Freeman came out on the Oscar stage and done it, it couldn't have been done better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> you showed me that earlier in the week, and I was like, wow, like we really take this a little too seriously. Right here. <laughs> well, on to new things, on to better things. Uh it's been a it's been a great ride, and uh, on to the new horse. Absolutely. And you know, again, everybody that stuck with us from this point on. It's only going to get better. Uh, you know, I know that people always say that, but it, it will be 10 times better. Uh, let's run down some stuff on the channel. Uh, again, with the new name next week, April 5th, it will so you'll see new logos and everything. In fact, Dr. Brentley. There you go. You almost see we couldn't have done it better. If we even planned it, could we? Everyone just got slapped <laughs> with the logo. <laughs> uh, I know that we're going to put up on our Instagram. We'll also have it put it on the um, uh, over on the the um, I guess the bios over the YouTube page. There'll be a spot where you can purchase like you know all kind of gear and everything coming up. Yes, Meeks, <laughs> get excited and everything else. That uh, there's going to be some some great T-shirts designed by. The, the, the main man himself, Mr. Maddox, I give him credit. He has been put burning the midnight oil on everything from whatnot <laughs> stores to, like, you know, cutting toy uh, toy stands to everything else like that. If it's in the middle of the night, he's cutting it. But we've got some really great, uh, some hoodies, some T-shirts. Uh, we're still trying to work on headbands, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And uh, I know there's some also, um, I think, with the, my... My new cowboy hat's coming in with the logo on it too. So, because I'm <laughs> for, I said, Texas, for the Texas Toy Con, Mr. Storm. <laughs> when, when we said, "Hey, we're moving," I said, "I'm going to go 100% Dave Filoni now." 
I'm just going to have it out. Just every time you see him, I just have cowboy hat. People ask, him, why does he have a cowboy hat? Because Dave Filoni could do it. Damn it, Mr. Sword could do it too. So we're running that down. Uh, if you haven't checked the site, Retro Rewind Club, you got to check it out. Like I said, Mr. Maddox, Chris, you guys do so much wonderful stuff. It is always entertaining to see that pop through. Uh, you guys got any new episodes coming up? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're definitely, uh, we got another one coming up. But uh, I think, uh, you know, the the what not, why not uh, feature is really cool. And, um, you know, we, we source uh, random toys from uh, post uh, vintage eras and uh, unveil them to each other and send them off uh, to each other's collections. So more to come. <laughs> uh more uh shadow toy hunts will be popping up on the, the channel oh look like it's a technical problem with chris oh, of course well you have to be and, the last and, show. And, have to and he's it. back yeah he's back now let's see if it's, does your mic still work uh, i think so yeah it's worth yeah, it work. work. okay. well more shadow toy hunts is popping on i know he's also going to do a, a new series he's been working hard on it's called uh, Shadow Toy Reviews. Uh, he's going to have uh, a little something to drink, a little cigar, and he's going to open up some stuff for us. So it's going to be very interesting. I know it's popping up the sites. Uh, again, check the site throughout the week. We're going to have some uh, stuff from WonderCon, some shorts and everything popping up. Wednesday nights, if you guys are liking this on Friday nights, then it's just you know half the crew, but more insanity. Uh, Toy Box Chronicles, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Myself, Mr. Maddox. Chopping it up about all things that are toys. Last week we had, well, actually this week technically, uh, we had Chris on. It was just a, another great show. We're going to definitely have him come back for more shows. So we're working that out. And other than that, man, does anybody have anything else left to say to our good friend, the Shadow Crew Podcast? No. It's a moment. We just need a no. moment of silence. That's all. Yeah. You know, I, I, we I hardly think. knew you. I think so. we'll tune in next week. We're going to have some big things. I'm out. I got to tell you something. Next week, one of you guys will be damn near doing a hosting because this shit's hard, bro. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you guys do it. I'll I go back it. to just being the guy in the back because Maddox, Chris, you guys do it so well. I, I've learned my lesson. The last show, this is the first time I get to do it, and it'll be the last time I get to do it. <laughs> well, I haven't ruled out bringing a fifth member uh, who is artificial intelligence as a member of the Pixel <laughs> Uh, Pixels Plastic Ink. Uh, so that'll save the trouble for any of us hosting. So we'll see. All right. Well, you never know what's going to happen on episode one. Mm -hmm. Well, for, for Chris, Mr. Maddox, Dr. Brentley, we thank everybody for tuning in. Catch us next week. See a new look, new time, but same crew. Good night, guys. Later. Adios. Yeah.